When Emperor Justinian I succeeded his uncle Justin in 527 CE, the Roman Empire was a shadow of its former self. Upon the death of Theodosius II in 395, it had been permanently divided between East and West. By 476, overwhelmed by repeated incursions, the Western portion had completely collapsed. Various barbarian kingdoms had arisen in its place, including the Ostrogoths in Italy, the Visigoths in Spain, the Vandals in North Africa, and the Franks in Northern Gaul, among others. The Hellenized remainder was known thereafter as Byzantium, and further east, the Sasanians constituted an ever-present threat. Although intermittent warfare with Persia persisted for most of Justinian's reign, these wars, although costly, yielded few significant territorial adjustments. Otherwise, Justinian's early focus was domestic. Upon his accession, he ordered a complete consolidation and revision of Roman law. The resulting Corpus Juris Civilis, commonly known as Justinian's Code, consisted of a complete legal code, a digest of writings by important jurists, a conceptual study of imperial law, and a series of new enactments by Justinian himself. Despite this early accomplishment, events in the capital threatened to force Justinian from the throne. Like Rome, Constantinople was a city of seven hills. Straddling Europe and Asia, where the Bosporus joins the Sea of Marmara, the city was endowed with strong walls and an enviable strategic position. Nevertheless, prompted by widespread discontent with Justinian's ministers, rioting in the Hippodrome spiraled into general unrest that shook the capital to its core. Known as the Nica Riots, they were the most severe civil disturbance in its history. Justinian himself nearly fled and abandoned his throne, but was prompted to hold firm by his formidable empress consort Theodora. He ultimately suppressed the rebellion, but only after widespread devastation in the city. In its aftermath, he initiated a grand building program, renovating the Palace of Blacerni and rebuilding the famed Hagia Sophia Cathedral, which still stands today. In the foreign policy arena, Justinian was determined to restore imperial rule to the West. Taking advantage of civil strife among the Vandals, he deployed General Belisarius to North Africa, where he promptly defeated King Gelimer at Ad Decimum in 533. By 534, the Vandal Kingdom in North Africa had disintegrated and Byzantine rule was restored. With Byzantine fortunes on the rise, Justinian then launched a two-pronged invasion of Italy in 535, inaugurating the Gothic Wars. Early successes saw the Byzantines recapture Dalmatia and much of Italy south of the Po River, but most of these gains proved ephemeral, and the empire was drawn into two decades of volatile warfare on the peninsula. As the conflict progressed, a brutal epidemic arrived from the east. Dubbed the Plague of Justinian, it killed up to a quarter of the empire's population, and returned in recurrent waves through 750. Together with the Gothic War, the plague imposed a mounting strain on imperial finances. Undeterred, Justinian dispatched expeditionary forces to Italy in 551 and Spain in 552. The latter quickly reconquered Spain's southeast, and Byzantine victories at Tagani and Mons Lictarius permanently broke Ostrogothic power in Italy paving the way for a full reconquest. Thereafter, the Ostrogoths ceased to play a major role in regional affairs, but reconquered Italy, including its principal cities Rome and Ravenna, had been dramatically depopulated. At this point, the Franks, who had been steadily extending their influence in Western Europe, invaded Italy in 553 alongside their Alemannic allies. However, the Byzantines under Narses annihilated the combined force at the Battle of Volturnus in 554 cementing the empire's hold on Italy. Together with the recovery of Spain and North Africa, this brought the empire to its greatest territorial extent since the collapse of the West a century earlier. For this reason, when he died in 565, Justinian the Great was celebrated for his quest to restore the Roman Empire to its previous grandeur. Nevertheless, his reconquest left Byzantium dangerously overstretched and ill-prepared to manage growing threats like the Lombards in Pannonia, the Avars to the north, and the rising Arab tribes to the southeast. Within a century of Justinian's death, the Lombards would invade Italy, the Avars would continually ravage the Balkans, the Visigoths would retake southern Spain, and the Arab Caliphate would overrun Egypt and Syria. 
leading many to question whether Byzantium's short-lived dominion over a depopulated West was a wise investment of imperial resources. Whether prudent or not, Justinian's foreign policy would earn him lasting fame as a committed steward of the Roman legacy.